pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll do the roll call here. Jay, would you please take the roll? Sure. Mr. Dupere? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. And Mr. McGee. <laughs> All I could come up with was Roger. <laughs> Mr. Roger. Mr. Roger. Mr. Yeah. McGee. Uh, sorry. Uh, right. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. And just for the record, uh, in the absence of board members uh, Auglis, Hendrickson, and Saunders, uh, Mr. DePerry will be a voting, a voting member this evening. Uh, the next item is approval of minutes from the September 18th, 2017 meeting. Any comments or discussion on that? Uh, I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. We'll be counting tonight. Um, the next item on the agenda, the first action item, Douglas and Linda, Linda Duvall request a site plan amendment review for Mamie's Farmhouse at 97 County Road, Assessor's Map R15, Lot 52. Jay, would you like to introduce this? Sure. Um, let's see. So this is an application for a site plan amendment, as you just noted, out in the TVC2 district out in North Scarborough along uh, County Road. Uh, some board members may recall this item was before you a few years ago at this point for the conversion of a, a portion of a, of a large farmhouse and barn into a, a restaurant and retail space. Um, and with that, there was some outdoor seating that was allowed and a parking facility and, and the like that was all approved. Uh, the applicant is now requesting approval for um, some accessory outdoor restaurant activities, specifically a grill space um, and, um, and some organized outdoor seating around that. Um, so you'll receive staff comments. And really, the principal question to the board is um, if you agree with staff staff's estimation that this is really an accessory use to the uh, approved restaurant and then provided that the board agrees with that assessment, um, really consideration being given to the requisite amount of parking and how much outdoor seating um, would be permissible with the activity. Um, we also just have other comments with regards to ensuring the access to the, the outdoor area is as stated and, and uh, ensuring the design is adequate for that. Um, I think really those are the two key questions, as I mentioned, with the uh, uh, interpretation of the ordinance and then the adequacy of parking. Um, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And uh, is the applicant's representative here? Yes. Come on up. I'm Linda Duvall. You can just uh, stand at the podium there oh, and the podium? Okay. introduce yourself. Thank okay. you. Um, Uh, I'm Linda Duvall, and that's my daughter, Jennifer Afton. And we did bring, a f we kind of wanted to go over, because I'm sure people maybe might not all be familiar with kind of who we are and what we've done in the short time we've been open. It's been almost four years. And I guess we kind of first wanted to start out with um, how we've affected the community and how proud they've been of what we've done. Jen's going to show you a front picture, is that the front picture, <laughs> of the farmhouse before, like when we bought it. And it was in pretty rough shape, the place. We've done a lot to it. Sorry, I didn't know we needed to forward. It's kind of curly there. And this is what the front of it looks like now. <laughs> Oops, sorry. No. Wait a minute. Sorry. At the front view, Jen. Okay, so it it took a big transformation, and the community we hear it every day, even still, on how people are so proud of it, delighted. Many of the people lived in the house, grew up in the house. It was built in 1853, so there's a lot of history and a lot of pride. And I think a lot of people thought it was going to be demolished. And when I look at the pictures, I think. Okay, what did we get into? But we made it through that part, and it really is something to feel proud of, and people are. 
and we've had a lot of interest from them of wanting a little bit more. We do mostly sandwiches and bakery. And so this would allow us during the good weather to have kind of, so they could enjoy the farmyard a little bit more, as it really is a very pretty, pretty place. But we'll do that in a second. Huh? Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quick. I'm not going to hold it there. <clears throat> I know it's important what this is going to look like. I know that's important to everybody. It is to us. Because as we show you the pictures of how it is now, you'll see we keep it impeccably. We're very proud of our property. And I think our customers are too, because we hear it all the time. Um, so Jen, show, the, show what the farm yard looked like first with the porch. So that was what it looked like, the porch and the area that would overlook the, and, and that again was, Pretty scary looking. <laughs> and this is a, rather a close up of it, but when we blew it up, but it's it's pretty, it's picturesque. And this is not, the peop, the customers cannot get up on the porch. It's not a lot to code. So we have a gate across that, and that's something that we get to enjoy with um, my granddaughter and Jen's little, little girl. So um, basically how we wanted to do this is placing just a normal grill, like you might have on your own deck, uh, on an eight by eight stone pad uh, with a cedar pergola over that. And I've talked with um, Jim Butler about some of these specs and we've taken them all into account so that we're allowing like three feet on each side so there's nothing that's too close. And also being um, 11 feet from the building, which I believe the requirement is 10 feet so it would be 11 feet, because we've got a pretty good front, good sized front yard to work with. And it's really the typical, if you want to pass that to them, Jen. And also I have this little drawing that has, might have a little more in than the original one that I gave Jay. But we're already um, approved for 12, like picnic tables or tables or benches which we don't use all of those now, but we probably would if we did this, and it would all be in that area. We've also account, tried to account for safety by planning a split rail fence that would go along the front part and to the corner of the house so people literally would come to us through the usual entrance. If they were gonna purchase something from the barbecue, then they would go out the front door. So they kind of corralled, they can't like, across the driveway, you know, where people could be entering in the parking lot. And um, so that this is some safety for children too, because sometimes they can be pretty quick. So we would have the split rail fronts along with um, shrubs, perennials. So it's kind of a nice natural barrier. We have that on the other side of our driveway. It looks very attractive. Plus it, you know, it serves a good purpose. So that's, Oh, is that the parking lot one now there, Jen? Okay, so that's what I'm gonna start in now on the parking lot. We are approved for 13, we were approved for 13 parking spaces and one of them is the ADA accessible space. Uh, three of those were for the gift side of our business. We were doing vintage things and it's, it just, it turned out to be all about the food basically. And the only time we really do the gift side now is at Christmas, which we wouldn't be doing this project during the winter time. So that was, a, there was three spaces accounted for that. <clears throat> so we really have, you know, ample parking that our, most of our customers, especially at lunchtime, they are regulars call ahead even, and they're in and out quite quickly. I usually still, I would say, have at least half of our parking spots available on a normal lunch day. And then, and then that's even on a busy day because people are in and out. They need to get you know, back to their job. Um, the majority of our customers are people working in the area and coming in, dashing in to get you know, quick lunch to take with them. A few people will go sit on the picnic tables, but most of them do not really. Um, let me see. Did you show the before picture? Because that was a really, <laughs> that's our entry, that was, that's where our entryway is now, and that's what it looked like when we bought the place. So I guess, I guess, for us it's very important to realize what we put into this place. It's kind of like 
Our heart and soul and a lot of money went into this place. But we've tried to do everything right. We've followed the rules. We've done, um, we've provided a, a safe environment and our customers seem to be very, very happy with that. So, you can put the better one up now. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. But, um, and another thing with the parking spots. I think we need to take into account, I think sometimes it seems like, oh, you might need more. We're not on Route 1. We're on 22, which does have a lot of traffic, but most people are dashing to work or going, for, you know, heading home. And so we're catching the people that, you know, yes, are interested in our food. But um, I think we really do have ample parking for that. Um, not to say that we don't have more land, but at this point I feel we have ample parking and we really do not want to add to the parking lot. We feel it's really just right for us. And I see it every day that, you know, we, we always have extra spaces. And I see that a lot of people even taking advantage of the barbecue probably will take, some of them will take it with them. I don't think everybody's going to stay and have it on a picnic table. Because many of our customers live really within five minutes or less. So I think, um, I think we have ample parking. Um, I guess to just summarize it, everything we've done about this place, we've put safety first. We've done everything that was requested of us and sometimes more in some cases to make it a safe environment for people to be able to access the farm in a safe way. And, and I guess I kind of would like to remind you that it's difficult for small businesses to survive. To bring this old place back to life, it's, it has cost us a lot. And it's, it's difficult for small businesses sometimes to make ends meet. And this would be a, a way for us to really be able to um, generate a little bit more business. Maybe some people would come to the barbecue that might not come in in, you know, in the evening and, and have a sandwich, but a barbecue is something we all like to have at dinner sometimes. And, you know, I think we're very proud. We offer, you know, a pleasant atmosphere for our customers. All right. Did anyone have questions for, for me? Thank you. Um, before we go to any board discussion, uh, there's the opportunity for public comment if anyone else wants to come on up? Seeing none. Um, how about you, Roger? Sure. <coughs> um, I actually took a ride out there today to, to see it. I live in Pleasant Hill, so I never really yeah. get out there. And I think what you've done there, I mean, based on the photos you showed, uh, you've done a remarkable job. And uh, I agree with you, it's hard to run a small business. There's a lot of challenges. Um, I. It seems to me, um, you know, where you want to put the grill, as long as you um, abide by what, you know, uh, we want to do regarding the direction, you know, the, uh, how to get there and everything, uh, I, I don't really have a problem with anything. I think you've, you've done a really wonderful job out there. I Thank wish you. you a lot of good luck. <laughs> Thank you. And nice weather. <laughs> Thanks. Nick? Thank you. I do live out that way, so I get to pass it almost every day, which is great. Um, and I've had your lunches there, so. Oh, good. good. <laughs> Very good. Um, a couple of quick questions here. Um, with your parking, um, I hope that you do really well with this. So if, if it comes to adding additional parking, if you do you see the ability to do that in the future if it was necessary? In the future, we could. Right now, we, you know, it would that would be a hardship that I wouldn't want to take on right now. But you have the but, space. But we do. We have four and a half acres. Right. So we do have the space. Okay. Um, and then my other thought here is being so close to 22 um, in that high traffic area, have you thought about what, how you're going to deal with trash? Uh, if you're going to have an open eating area in the front, that can blow away or whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, are you going to have enclosed trash areas or are you just going to put like a Rubbermaid barrel out with that? Well, have you thought about it? We've had very good luck with people. I think, number one, people see how neat and well kept it is. And most people, I haven't really had to pick anything up in the yard, but we usually keep, you know, at, right at this point, we keep one trash barrel outside, and that's been more than adequate because of, I don't have a lot of people sitting out there right now. But we would most certainly probably add several in key places so that we wouldn't really wouldn't have to worry about 
you know, most of our customers have been very respectful of that. I think I'm probably more worried about something blowing, blowing into the road. Oh, yeah, well, or blowing I, off the top of a trash can into the road. Yeah. Right. Well, I think that the fence may help too because what I did with the, our other fence, we have like, you know, daisies, perennials, bushes that I would think if something like a napkin blew, in most cases, it's probably going to get caught by one of those things, so it's going to stay on our side, our side of the fence, so to speak, I would think. Okay. Put some thought into maybe a covered bin type of thing. Oh, yeah. Can you go ahead? Yeah, we certainly, I, that's because what I have, that I have out right now is a covered one because, yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm okay with the interpretation as an accessory use. Um, and I don't think I have any other questions. Wish you luck. Thanks, Nick. Rick? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've actually been to your staff. You look familiar to me. We go there quite a bit. I felt I should sit over there. But, um, <laughs> it's really good. Uh, and my daughter really likes the cupcakes. Um, and I've looked over what you want to do, and I think it's wonderful. Um, it'd be nice to have another place to eat where we can walk to, and I um, think that it fits in very well with that area. Um, I like that you left the farmhouse kind of as a farmhouse and then worked around what was there rather than making a lot of changes to make it look more modern or something. So um, I think it fits really well with the area. I think the barbecue in the summertime would be a great addition. Sure. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I'm also good with this. I think it's certainly meets the definition of an accessory use. Um, and I also want to say that I appreciate you making the effort to, first of all, reach out and make sure you're following all the regulations, but also coming with the photos and everything and being prepared, and that, that was very helpful. So, um, do you have something? Yeah, I do just have a quick question. So the, the pergola, I guess staff didn't pick up on that as part of the uh, initial application. So just want to be clear, the pergola is proposed to be sort of over the grill area. Yes. And I just want to be clear that we'll have to have a conversation with Jim Butler, who's our commercial code and fire inspector, um, to be <laughs> sure that that's um, going to meet all the rules. Um, okay. So regardless of sort of the board's action here tonight, presuming the board's satisfied that the pergola looks decent and would be happy with it, provided <coughs> it meets all those other rules, then it would be allowed. However, if there's some other life safety rules, building code requirements that would say, no, you can't do this for whatever reason. I just want to be sure that that's clear okay. as part of this discussion, that that may okay. come up since we're just receiving this tonight. Um, okay. I think the board can take their action just knowing that okay. the pergola is still a question that needs okay. to be answered. I did talk to Jim a little bit. I happened to run into him okay. when I was at the town. <laughs> and we kind of talked a little bit. And I think we've met what what's kind of satisfied his, what he told me to look for and all the mm -hmm. rules and regulations to look into. Okay. But, um, you know, if we can't have that, then, you know, we'd still like to proceed. So it would just be nice to have a little shade because I'm afraid on the really hot days some of us might be melting out there, but, you know. But, um, no, Jim, is, he's been very helpful. I've asked him several questions, and, I, you know, we want to do everything right. I don't want to have anything that's a hazard in any way, so. Great, thanks. I appreciate you highlighting that. Um, I'm fine with the parking. I'm, I'm always one to, I'm never one, or usually uh, not, uh, not looking to add parking where we don't think it's necessary. And it's, I'm glad that Mr. McGee asked about the ability to potentially add more down the road if it comes to that. Because we, we have had some businesses in town that have been victims of their own success. And um, it's a good problem to have at the end of the day. Yeah. But I always want to make sure that we're um, accounting for that. And I also appreciate you along the lines of bringing the photos and so forth of showing us an example of the, um, the plantings and the fencing. And I think that type of screening will be great. Um, and I think it's wonderful what you've done with the property and that you're, you're making this effort to, to, uh, to do this next step the right way. So uh, with that, I have a fairly straightforward motion of approval that I would like to put forward. Um, I move to approve the application of Linda Duvall for the addition of accessory outdoor restaurant activity at Mammy's Farmhouse with the following conditions. Number one, no more than 20 outdoor seats to be provided. 
Number two, access to the outdoor area shall be through the main building entrance and that modifications will be made to the site ensuring access is limited accordingly. Um, I assume that's okay with you. I guess we didn't really talk about that explicitly during our comments, but it was in the, the yeah. staff notes. Yeah. So. Okay, great. Uh, so that is the motion. There's a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much. <coughs> Item number five, Valentin Development, LLC, requests review of the 10th amended subdivision plan for Eastern Village, Assessor's Map R73, Lot 21A. Okay. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's a pretty straightforward uh, amendment request. As you noted, this is the 10th amendment of Eastern Village. Um, and uh, uh, essentially what's being requested is a very minor lot line adjustment between a couple of lot, uh, properties where a townhouse is to be built. So the lot lines really are, are, are for ownership purposes. The building itself and its massing isn't changing because um, the townhouse is attached units that do have separate ownership. So unlike a condo where there would be common ownership, uh, these folks actually own the land on which their portion of the building sits. So um, as you'll see, staff had no comments on this and I turn it back to you for consideration. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Anderson. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I think um, Jay pretty much summed it up. Um, all we're looking to do is have the lot lines coincide precisely with the actual uh, individual unit dimensions. In fact, uh, most of them changed six inches and a couple of them changed a foot on the Townhouse uh, lots between 72 and 76, they changed it a little bit more. The ones on 109 to 114 literally changed six inches apiece. And it is a fee simple ownership situation, so we need to get them exactly right where they're supposed to be. Right. Thank you. Um, we do again have the opportunity for public comment. Uh, if there's anyone who would like to speak on this. All right, seeing none. Um, I just have a quick question, and we'll see if others have anything. I, I'm assuming that it is lots 72 through 76. Uh, I'm only asking because the, the staff, yep, the, the brief staff memo, so 72, 75, everything yep, else. That was my error. Okay. All right. Just wanted to be clear. Um, anyone else? Um, thanks, Jay. It's good. No? Okay. Uh, yep, pretty straightforward. Um, I will therefore move to approve the application of Valentine Development LLC for the 10th Amendment <coughs> to the Eastern Village Subdivision. The amended plan includes adjustments to the lot lines between townhouse lots 72 through 76 and townhouse lots 109 through 114. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Such a long memo. Yeah. I think that's Definitely a, a speed record for Eastern Village. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Item number six. JXH LLC requests a site plan amendment review for Ameriprise Financial Planning, 5 Ward Street, Assessor's Map U43, Lot 40. Okay. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. So let's see, this application was before you uh, recently, I believe it was back maybe in September, perhaps in August, I don't quite recall, but fairly recently. And as you remember, it is for a site plan amendment to an existing site at 5 Ward Street, which is in the TDC2 district. Some 10 years ago or so, the site was originally approved for a conversion of a residential house into an office. And at this point, the applicant's seeking a, a roughly 800 uh, square foot addition with some additional parking. Uh, during your last review, really there were some, some questions about sort of the technical analysis. And so I think with that, I'll turn it to uh, the town engineer to sort of bring you up to speed as to where things are at. Oh. Um, I think staff's in agreement that they've responded to majority of the comments, I think it comes down to um, more of the technical pieces in the stormwater and just a couple um, that I consider minor enough where this is a small site um, and the BMP that they're proposing um, has room to, to do that 
I guess, minor tweaks of that system. And so really a back and forth, I think, between myself and the designer, I, I believe we could get there. The other piece was the um, maintenance and inspection plan that was needed was in Woodrow and Kern's comments as well. And again, um, I did have a chance to look at that today. And with that, I had a few comments, which I've kind of touched base with um, the designer on that already as well. So I think between staff and um, Steve Blaze Engineering, we could get that pretty easily. I have no more okay. concerns. Great. Thank you. And I'll turn over to the applicant. Yep. Um, so you did see us at the end of August uh, before. Um, what we were asked to follow up on uh, mostly was the existing conditions plan. Uh, Nadeau Land Surveyors did provide us with an updated plan, updated the topography, um, collected the services, elevations, uh, so all of our plans now reflect that. Um, another item requested by the Scarborough Sanitary District was easements along the existing sewer line that runs through the parcel, uh, which is shown. Um, no impacts to there. What we did because of the easement was we shifted the stormwater uh, BMP to the north slightly to remain outside of that easement. Um, but all the calculations uh, remain good. Um, talk to Angela briefly. Uh, understand there's a couple minor comments that need to be addressed with the sizing of the area of interest, but the BMP is oversized to begin with, so it won't be an issue. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, just for the record, could you state your name? I'm not sure. Oh, if sorry, I that Peter really. Heil from Blaze Civil Engineers. Yeah, thank you. Anybody have anything on this? I just got a quick question. Uh, the right title of interest, that's all straightened out. Uh, so you're talking about sort of the sewer easement and those? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Satisfied with those issues? Roger. Okay. If Angela's um, satisfied with it, I'm satisfied with it. All right. Okay. I think they did a good job. Yeah. I guess. Thank you. Yeah, similarly, um, reassured to hear that Angela is on board with the responses and sort of the ongoing dialogue and the roadmap of the loose end. So Sounds good. Um, appreciate the response to that. Did you have something? No? no? Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's really anything else to, uh, to that on this one. And we'll leave it to the technical experts to work out the nitty-gritty details that remain. Fun stuff. Right. <laughs> Uh, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that, I move to approve the application of JXH LLC for the site plan amendment consisting of an approximately 800 square foot building addition and parking lot expansion to the Ameriprise Financial Services offices at 5 Ward Street with the following condition. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit a revised HydroCAD model and inspection and maintenance plan for review and approval by the town engineer. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. Thanks. Look. <laughs> Item number seven. Matthew Chamberlain requests a preliminary subdivision review for Yellow Birch Estates, 203 Holmes Road, Assessor's Map, R23, Lot 16. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see. So this is an application that's also been before you, I think, <coughs> twice now. Once as a sketch plan mm -hmm. and then previously as a preliminary uh, submission. Um, the board had some additional questions, so the applicant has gone back and done some further due diligence in, in response to those uh, requests and is back before the board for a their second preliminary, uh, second round of preliminary review. So just as a reminder for the board and those who are, who are watching, uh, this is for a residential subdivision in the RF district, residential farming district. It's also in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. Um, 
the applicant is proposing or a conservation subdivision as required based on the site characteristics. And uh, to that end, um, one of the first staff comments we have uh, regarding, uh, regards the open space and the harvesting plan that the applicant has put together for the open space. I um, want to be sure that the board has reviewed the uh, proposal um, and that the board finds that it is consistent with the um, intent of the <coughs> ordinance. The applicant, I, I will note that the harvest plan does say there will not be any harvesting within the wetlands, which is really one of the stated purposes of a conservation subdivision, which is to uh, <coughs> avoid any impacts to wetlands. Um, and so the harvest plan does that as well as, but does allow some other cutting in what will be harvest area um, with then revegetation <coughs> taking place. So I think board should at least have some conversation around that and be sure um, let the applicant and staff know if you're comfortable with that if, if and as this moves forward. Um, let's see, we also have some other uh, sort of design um, comments regarding stormwater um, and, and site development. Um, let's see, one of the other items that we talked about at the first uh, submittal for preliminary review was around site access. I think that was really one of the area of the board's principal interest and the applicant's uh, traffic engineers provided uh, revised uh, commentary for the board to, to consider. Um, so I want to be sure we talk about that and there's some modest improvements within the uh, right of way shoulder that are being proposed. Um, so it might be worth the discussion there. Um, and then the final item, I guess, from our staff notes that I'll raise just for board to talk about is uh, the provision seeking street trees, the addition of street trees, which the subdivision ordinance um, calls for. Um, and, 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 and so the response to staff's prior comments was a little bit vague, and so we want to be sure we're, we drill into that question and the board's expectations, again, um, should this move forward so that it's clear what the expectations are. A um, few other comments uh, <coughs> in here, but I think those are sort of the highlights. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to the applicant or their representative. Yeah, thank you. My name is Paul Gabbage. I prepared the uh, site plan in front of you this evening. Um, I believe we addressed all of the August 1st uh, wooden and current and staff comments at the previous submission. Um, like Jay said, uh, wooden and current had two minor uh, comments on this particular submission uh, and there were basically uh, some negative slopes in the call which we have fixed those they were pretty minor in general they, they've already been taken care of um, then it's pretty much as far as I'm concerned with the staff comments and no concerns whatsoever as far as all the issues the staff brought up they're pretty much uh, just doing some note work to the plan um, and then again it's of course street trees and we have no problems of course planting one or two trees per lot if that's what's required most of the sites wooded however as you first came in the property it's field, so we have no issues about plot, uh, planting trees in that area. But we will be glad to work with the staff on the street trees. <coughs> and so, and I'll be glad to answer any questions, but the items uh, that were presented by staff and Wood and Curran are all minor in nature, and we have no problems resolving all those issues. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> if, and I, if I might, again, just for by way of process, I should have mentioned that as this is a subdivision, um, there is a two-step <coughs> approval process for it. Um, the first is a preliminary approval, and uh, basically the preliminary approval sort of sets the stage for a final approval where um, should the board sort of have be generally comfortable with the direction the subdivision's headed, then um, um, they would be granting preliminary approval. So I should mention that. Thank you. Roger? Sure. Um, I was uh, I actually went on a, on a site walk and I want to talk first about the harvesting of the the trees yes um, I agree that that would be a good idea to do that because as I recall it's almost all large pines and um, especially if they're going to be you know you're going to allow uh, oaks and maples and etc like that to um, replace those naturally and as long as you're going to put some, uh, you know, street sign, uh, street trees along the road, I think that would make it look nice. But the uh, the pines, I live in a neighborhood where there's large pines, and I'm sure if you surveyed all the people who live there, they would they wish the contractor took them out 
many years ago because now they'd cost a fortune to take them out and they're, they're really a dirty tree. Uh, so I, I have no problem with that at all. Um, on the um, on the entranceway, we talked about that and the um, the traffic. Uh, there was a concern about that. I, uh, what do you, what's the feeling? Of, I guess who's responsible for the sign that that Bill Bray suggested? It's the W. I, I have it written yep, down here. Yep. Um, so the W two dash two sign. Who would be responsible for that? Well, so Public Works can order them, but it would be the responsibility for the developer to purchase and, and well, I guess if it's in our right of way, we would install it as well. But it would be their responsibility to responsibility to pay for it. Yeah, <coughs> that's something that we can easily order. I mean, I I think um, coming <coughs> towards town, that would be it would be good to have that sign there because as you're coming up around the bend, um, it's my belief you don't you you don't notice that there's a, a road there or there will be a road there on, on the left so I think that would be a good a good um, addition there and and on the light that's going to be there I understand the contractor is responsible for installing it who's responsible for maintaining it that it would be in the town right away so it would be something that we would accept the okay. town would okay. um, so it would be yes there there's a purchase um, and we're still at a a point now where we're switching, well, we're yeah, working know, on switching yeah. to the LED. And so the actual fixture has not been selected by the town yet, which is coming the next few months. So I think the timing would work out well that we would know by the time they need to put one in yeah. what our selection would be and they would be responsible for Okay. Um, I guess my last question is the, um, the, uh, the, cul uh, the uh, culvert that's constantly mentioned in here. Is it a culvert? Can you tell me where that is? <laughs> I don't. I don't necessarily have a problem if it's okay with Angela. Just that's what I thought it was. Okay, because wasn't there some discussion about uh, another culvert later on, uh, further in the property? No. I know that. There was. Well, the, the question about embedding in a wetland. Okay. Typically, want it embedded so that critters can can move freely back and forth not knowing they're in a culvert <laughs> um, is one thing. And then I think there was, um, because of this system kind of goes back and forth, there was some questions, but I think they've addressed that. Okay, good. All right. Uh, I guess I'm all set then. Okay. Thanks, <coughs> Roger. Nick? Yeah. Uh, so the, just looking at the harvest plan, um, I'll just say that I, I do like the markings that you'll be doing for each tree that should come down. And not only that, we already worked on the town of the opportunity to review it. I think that's it's been smart um, <coughs> way to do this, as well as um, making sure that you're keeping out of the wetland area. So, uh, watch those efforts. And I think, that, you know, from what I'm reading here, it seems like it's just making it, it's follow through. It's making sure everyone does what they say they do in the <coughs> way. So, I'm okay with the harvest plan as it's stated. Um, the site access and the traffic study, I, you know, I strongly encourage you. I know you, you said you do have the extra site distance there, um, but I think I think you're still going to trim back, um, oh, yeah. just because of the, the curb and the safety issues uh, on that road. <coughs> we all know the speed limit is what the sign says it is. I'm not sure how well people abide by it. Um, so the, the larger sight lines for, for these purposes definitely would say yes. Um, and then street trees. We love street trees. Uh, if you're taking out some trees, it doesn't hurt to put a couple back in. So sure, it's not a problem. Right. <coughs> um, outside of that, I believe I'm out of comments. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Rick? I just have a couple. Um, <coughs> I know that um, we're just doing preliminary here, but the footprints for all the houses appear to be the same. Are they going to be identical? <coughs> no, they're not be, but we just have to choose some sort of basic yeah. footprint for design purposes. And I was just, they can be all the same. I'm just right. No, they won't. They won't be. <coughs> and I think uh, Angela's request that we actually submit a grading plan. So once the contractor knows the footprint, obviously it's going to fit in within the clearing envelope and the setbacks, and we have to come up with an individual grading plan per lot, uh, from what I understand, to the past comments here. So, and we have no issues with that. So, yeah, the footprints will change. Okay. And then um, 
the existing structure that's referenced yep. with the new septic system, could you just enlighten me as to what, I, I'm not, I can't picture in my mind where this, I, I know where that intersection is, I've driven by this a thousand times but I just can't picture in my mind, right? What is that existing structure? It's a single family residence, Matt probably knows about it more than I do, but. Matt, need to come on up to the, yeah, thank you. The actual property is 203 Holmes Road, and 203 Holmes Road originally consisted of 22 and a half acres and a 1,580 square foot, three bed, two bath bungalow. Okay. Is that, are you rehabbing that, or we? Yes, I mean, this, this is going to get uh, work done to the outside. It's not going to get leveled. We're not going to remove it because it's in great shape. Yeah, that's, so that's what I was curious. Is it staying or is it going? It's going to stay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, those are just the. I uh, just general questions. I, uh, as far as the layout and everything else, I'm, I'm fine with it. You're you're okay with the harvest plan generally? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not an expert on it, but it seems like these <laughs> seems like it's, they're satisfied. So. Oh, Roger. I'm not a, an expert at harvest plan. <laughs> But Nick, we're Nick all deferring to Rogers. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick seemed like he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> so on he convinced me it was okay. I'm wearing a plaid shirt. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you. Um, I'm definitely uh, good with the harvest plan Thanks. as well. And uh, as Mr. McGee said, I appreciate some of the, the details in terms of markings and deferring <coughs> with the town and so forth. Um, Likewise, I, I agree with the comments on site access and sight lines and, and um, definitely uh, look for uh, street trees and we'll look to see how, how things go moving forward in coordination with the town on street lights as well. Just one brief housekeeping item and I apologize because I was not at the previous meeting where we discussed this project. Jake, could you just Remind me or confirm uh, that the applicant has previously submitted a, a conventional layout for net residential yes. purposes? Okay. Yes, they have. Great. Just wanted to make sure. I assume that was the case. I uh, couldn't remember right off. Um, so with that, again, as, as, uh, as Jay uh, reminded us, this is a, a kind of a multi-step process. And um, I think I'm hearing everyone's generally comfortable with the where we are right now in terms of the harvest plan and the other items that we've talked about. So um, I don't have a big fancy motion or anything, but I will move uh, that we uh, grant uh, preliminary subdivision approval to Yellow Birch Estates at 203 Holmes Road, Assessor's Map R23, Lot 16. Second. And second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank That's you. unanimous. Thanks, and look forward to the next step. Item number eight, Five Stars Holdings LLC requests a sketch plan review for a conservation subdivision at 48 Mitchell Hill Road, Assessor's Map, R10, Lot 5. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, this is a sketch plan submission, so it's uh, informal in nature and an opportunity for the applicant to present general concepts of what they're uh, considering going forward with and ask questions of the board. and for the board to raise any uh, issues of significance that they want the applicant to dive into a bit further as they're preparing their formal submission. Uh, this application is for a uh, sub residential subdivision in the RF district. It's, uh, I believe, supposed to be a nine-lot residential subdivision, meeting our conservation subdivision design standards, uh, which are required based on the amount of uh, wetlands that are on the site. Um, so let's see, staff put together some comments and one thing I do need to uh, clarify is uh, stated that it wasn't clear when the wetlands delineation was done, though there was a report that was submitted and staff apologizes for um, not getting that incorporated into our staff memo. So um, it was identified that the wetlands were delineated in August of 2017. Um, 
and it was stated that there weren't any streams on site, and so it would be sort of interesting in hearing a little bit more about that, um, given what we, our mapping shows us of the area and um, what we have heard fr um, from some neighbors about the area. Um, but uh, so I think that's just one thing we want to stay in touch with. Um, let's see, I also note that a conventional subdivision layout uh, is required to be submitted as part of the application. Um, for that uh, density determination. Uh, part of the rationale for that is in these conservation subdivisions, density is really determined by two things. One is your net residential density, uh, that's sort of a calculation of the carrying capacity of the lot. But then uh, one also needs to demonstrate that lots meeting the conventional layout, two acres, two acre lots with at least 200 feet of frontage would be, uh, are capable of fitting on the lot. Um, Based on staff's comments, the applicant's engineer sent us a conventional layout late last week, which we frankly haven't had time to review in earnest, but um, we'll do that as part of the, any formal submission moving forward. Um, let's see, there's also some comments regarding uh, Mitchell Hill Road right away um, and just ensuring that um, uh, there's adequate attention being paid uh, in terms of ditch lines and where uh, you know, test pits are currently being shown and uh, adequacy for septic systems on each site. Um, and then the other thing I'll just note and, and you know, note, note we'll get an answer tonight is really around the, the question of proposed lot 5A, this sort of future lot. It's a little bit convoluted um, and I'm sure the applicant's prepared to help, help, uh, help us through what that consideration is, but that's just something we'll need to sort of work through the nuances of, um, and I'm sure we can get there. Um, oh, I guess the other thing, just in terms of the overall design, one of the things that the uh, conservation subdivision standard talks about is, I mentioned this with the last ones, really preserving uh, all wetland features on site and, and providing for, a and that includes a 25 foot upland buffer to the wetlands and a couple of the lots have wetlands actually on them, so that's another uh, design consideration that will have to be taken into uh, uh, consideration <laughs> moving forward. With that, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And I will turn it over to the applicant. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Bill Thompson with BH2M Engineers, uh, the project manager for Five Star Holding. Uh, we're proposing the uh, subdivision, as uh, Jay indicated, on the Mitchell Hill Road. Uh, we're calling it a 10-lot subdivision, which I'll, I'll get into a, a little further in my presentation. Uh, we have com uh, completed a conventional plan. The density calculations do support 11, just over 11 lots. Our preference, obviously, is the conservation subdivision, which is uh, in the RF zone. Uh, this would allow us to have over 17 acres of open space and about 11 acres uh, committed to the, uh, to the lots. <clears throat> All the lots will be a minimum of 30,000 square feet with 100 feet of frontage. Septic test pits have been completed by Alex Finnamore. Uh, this plan here shows uh, the <coughs> test pit locations and the soil logs uh, have all been completed. They meet or exceed the uh, Scarborough standards of 12 inches of soil before you get a, any uh, uh, modeling or, or restriction. Um, they'll all have their individual drilled wells. Uh, the sites are, like I said, 100 feet of frontage or a little bit more. Uh, they'll be 300 plus feet deep. Uh, the lots will be sold to builders. Uh, Five Star Holding is not a house building company. Uh, wetlands were done, as, as Jay indicated earlier. He uh, said they were missing, but uh, they were done by uh, <coughs> Vanessa Hangen uh, Bruslin, I believe, is known as the VHB. Uh, in, in their wetland report, um, they did not uh, find any stream out in that rear section and also no indication of any vernal pools but we obviously will continue to review that to see uh, what, the, uh, what the issue might be if, if there is uh, any issue. Uh, Jay's memo, <coughs> is he stepped through few, uh, some of the items. Uh, yes, the 25-foot upland buffer uh, on those lower lots uh, will be addressed. Uh, I have a concept that I worked on today for the client to, uh, to correct that. And I'll, and I'll meet with Jay to make sure we fully understand uh, the, the requirements for that. And again, uh, Jay's uh, comment, potential stream. Um, I've had a couple of uh, wetland uh, scientists out there and soil evaluators, and no one has seen any indication of it on this property. So again, we'll do a little bit more research on that. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, site distance uh, was talked about. Uh, I went out there today and, and confirmed again uh, all lot, nine lots would have uh, adequate, exceed the minimum uh, site distance for driveways. So we believe we, we have, uh, have, have that addressed or we will have it addressed at the next submission. Uh, the test pits on lot eight and nine, I went and looked at them. They will be, and they're still open. They were dug with a backhoe so we could review them. Um, they will be minimum setback from the right-of-way line um, when we do get to the point of, of constructing any, uh, any septic systems. Uh, on the, uh, there is an existing house on site, and that's shown, that's on, uh, that's shown here in the middle of the property. Right now, it's a two-family unit. Uh, the applicant would like to do is when they sell this house, if the person <coughs> wants to convert it or revert back to a single-family home, we would like to have a lot, a, another conservation lot that would be developed here, and I'm calling it Lot 5A just to identify it. <coughs> if this stays as a two-family, this is what will be the lot which exceeds the requirement, 200 feet of frontage, would support the two-family use. If the person buying that said, no, I don't want a two-family house, I want to go back to a single-family house, we would like to have a lot approved here in the condition that it cannot be developed, sold, or built on unless this reverts back to a single-family house. We put a lot of land with it just to, just to put it with the house. Um, you come down the hill, these are all wooded here. We come into a nice field, and then the fronts of these lots here uh, are flat in the wooded, uh, wooded area out the back. So I know it's, it's a little unique, but uh, what we'd like to do is, is try to provide um, what could happen without having to come back and amend the plan and have that provision. We have done a test bit on it. It would support uh, a septic system if that was to become one of the conservation lots. So a little unique, but, you know, we'd like to see what the board thinks about that, and, and I, that was first time Jay uh, saw my comments and um, mentioned that we'd present it tonight and see uh, see what the uh, you know see what the feeling of the board and what the comments might be. So that about uh, summarizes. Uh, we've gone through the ordinance. Um, obviously, um, we need to need to complete uh, additional design services. But the, again, just all road frontage lots. Uh, driveway site distances work, septic and well, uh, they all exceed 30,000 square feet. And we will take a look at the, the issue with the 25-foot buffer uh, on those lots. It may make some adjustments to those lower lots, but that would be uh, before we come forward for any preliminary considerations. Thank you. Thank you. Rick? Take the first question. Sure. I just have a couple quick questions. Um, the open space that's shown there, it's quite a bit open space. Um, I'm trying to tell from the topography how much of that is actually, how wet is that wet? I mean, is it um, up or is it? No, some of the, I can't tell from the topography. Some, some of the area down here, yeah, it gets, gets a little, but I, in walking out, I, I, I was never in a bog or, you know, can't go on. So I'm sure okay. at different times of the year, uh, it does get wetter, uh, but we've got a pocket of, Yeah, I'd like to, um, you know, have you and Jay talk more about this lot 5A, to, the, the way there's a driveway. I, I'm sure there'll be some more discussion on that. I don't have strong feelings either way right now, but it's kind of, uh, it, it's, it's something that I think. Um, yeah, as far as preliminary, I'm fine. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Nick? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Just to follow up on the 5A, um, do you know roughly how far away your current lot line would be from the corner of that house? It would be set back. It wouldn't be yes. set back. Yes, we've designed it so it would. And we'd have to have a, a, a driveway easement for the farm, let's call it a farmhouse, the existing house to come across 5A if 5A was developed. Um, would it be a shared be, driveway? Is I would believe, the, yes. Yes. That would be the plan. Yep. Um, and then. It sounds like you're going to work with some of the lot lines in the back with the wetlands and 
Correct. Um, yeah, my initial thought was on five, you had a plenty of space to play with. That's one area you could have cleared. Correct. Avoided some wetlands in there. Um, yeah, I, it's, uh, I'd be interested to see how 5A comes along. <laughs> um, it's definitely interesting. Uh, outside of that, I don't have. Okay, so you did meet setbacks on if 5A went through. You would meet setbacks. For that house, yes. I can assume that front that front corner is probably grandfathered. How close to the road is that? Yes. Um, that, that front corner is probably 10 feet. Okay. Or maybe closer uh, from the right of way. But we won't be creating any new boundaries that are going to... No, that, that'll be, like you said, grandfathered okay. existing conditions. Uh, I think that's about it for now. I, I definitely want to see how the new layout would look sure. once you uh, deal with that well. Thanks, Nick. Roger? Um, just for my clarification, um, so what you're intending to do is to sell off individual lots to contractors, not necessarily one, but could be single contractors? Correct, or a customer who, who comes forward. That so they would come back every time to the board? No. Nope. If it's a single lot, they don't have to. Correct. Okay. Once the lots are approved as part of the subdivision. Okay, so at this point, we're not really concerned with how the layout of the lot is uh, in terms of the where the structure would be located and the driveways or anything like that. We're just looking. Well, at this point, sketch plan, they haven't yeah. provided that level of detail. Yeah. So I think, you know, in terms of how much, I think it would get sort of to the question we've been asking quite a bit on sort of these conservation subdivisions is how much of the lot for stormwater uh, purposes is being considered developed or disturbed area. Um, and so I think, you know, and Angela did bring up the question, or I think it was Angela maybe, about sight lines along Mitchell Hill Road. And so that's where the discussion around driveways comes into play. You know, where does it make potentially sense to have combined shared driveways? Um, is it just 5 and 5A? Presuming that can move forward in the in the uh, pattern that's proposed, or are there other opportunities that might make sense? I think those are all sort of questions that will be explored as we move through the preliminary. And, uh, that, that was that was the um, the purpose of my question because I was out there today too, and and I I don't really see any problem with what you what you plan to do. The only uh, potential problem I could see is having all those driveways going right out onto Mitchell Hill Road, which is a main artery mm -hmm. going out there and I was just it, this may not be the appropriate time to do it but I would think I, I would suggest in the future when we look at that that we have some t turnaround in the driveway so when people are heading out they're heading out mm -hmm. you know the front frontwards instead of trying to back out onto Mitchell Hill Road sure. otherwise you know the the road it's pretty flat right out there so I don't I that's all I have yeah. thanks um, yeah, just piggybacking on, on your the, the comments about individual lots and what we're kind of looking at at this stage, and I, I agree with you on the the sight lines and thinking about that um, potentially looking at driveway configurations, shared driveways, things like that. As well, it, it is relatively flat at, at this particular spot. Mitchell Hill, in general, obviously has some mm. ups and downs and some some blind curves, uh, traffic as in a lot of other parts of town, it's going faster than opposed to the speed limit frequently. Um, and so, and uh, on the lot, general lot configuration theme, I'm glad to hear you're already working on the, the, the wetlands and trying to keep those out of, the, uh, out of the house lots and, and adhering to that 25-foot uh, upland buffer. Um, in terms of the lot 5A question, and I guess this is for you, Jay, mm -hmm. um, as, as you look at it, what sort of what sort of clarification would you want to see, or, or should the board expect to see in terms of um, clarifying whether it's something that sort of passes muster? It seems like there's part of it that's dimensional and part mm -hmm. of it that's more kind of procedural, if you will, in terms of the house reverting back to single family. And I'm, I think I think we're all probably trying to imagine what that would look like. Mm -hmm terms of the procedure? Yep. So yeah, it's not really a dimensional question. It really is around sort of the procedural. Does the board have the ability to approve a future lot should, you know, with 
certain things happening and that, you know, it's not a question that I've ever been posed nor have I explored. So I guess, as I said in my staff comments, I'd really look to the applicant to put together a, a legal opinion on the matter. Um, you know, if they don't do that, we'll certainly turn to our town's attorney to help uh, with that. But it's usually sort of at the applicant's uh, uh, benefit to provide an opinion to, for our attorney to respond to um, rather yep. than... Uh, we'll be happy to do that. Yeah, sure. Right. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Sure. And, and to follow up on the comments, we will be showing suggested building locations. And I agree with the turnaround on site. You come out of your garage, you have a back in, and you come out face forward. But um, it really is a pretty safe section as far as sight distance. Uh, there were no no lots that were really close. I know, you know, speed is always an issue. Um, but I was out there probably for an hour today and midday and, well, actually it was mid-morning and, you know, I might have seen three cars in an hour. Uh, so I'm sure there's moments, commuter time and so forth. But I think given the sight distance and, and the, uh, the location, I think we can we can make it work and we can represent that on our next submission. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I appreciate also the clarification on the the, um, the vintage of the uh, the wetlands delineation. Um, in the staff comments, it was suggested that, that the board consider requesting uh, a peer review of the, of the wetlands delineation. Um, it seems to me, on the face of it, that this might be a good a good uh, case for that, given. The amount of wetlands here, uh, the number of lots potentially impacted, as well as the close proximity to the Nonsuch River, this really drains right right back into it. At least I assume, based on uh, what I've seen in the area and, and how it maps. Um, in terms of timing, Jay, um, how how would that dovetail with with the rest of this process in terms of the other things that the what the applicant needs to do, and would that necessarily add time to the process? Um, so, uh, if the board um, thinks that you know this is a project where that should happen, um, staff cannot uh, work with the applicant to get that done immediately, even before uh, formal submissions made. Um, it, it is just to everyone's clear. Uh, a cost that's borne as part of an application, but we could certainly work something out so it could be part of and integrated into a preliminary subdivision. Um, but I think it, so I, I think it could be, you know, uh, within a matter of weeks we could have our uh, peer reviewers out there. In, in the past uh, uh, applications where the board has requested that, um, it's been pretty quick. And mm -hmm. so what, within a week or three, mm -hmm. probably. Three, <laughs> uh, yeah, two three weeks that we were able yeah. to get um, the outfit out there to do that work. So, uh, I, I, I didn't recall it being an issue, but I yeah. wanted to put that out there. And I'm, I'm also, you know, I'm never looking to add costs yeah. arbitrarily. But uh, again, it does seem to me that this could be inappropriate. Yeah, and I think what we try to do is be sure that you know, it's sort of we have the our peer reviewers sort of focus on those areas where there's potential conflict. You know, maybe they don't need to get as detailed in the back of the lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe they take a quick walk through just to be sure things are generally about right. Um, but you know, where where it comes close to the lots, maybe that's where they do it. You know, hone in just a little bit more. So I, I you know, um, I don't think it's a um, too time consuming on our peer reviewer side. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Appreciate that sure. as well. Thank you. Um, beyond that, I mean, it's all the usual, all the usual stuff for sure. for sketch stage, and you know the drill. And um, appreciate the, the time and the updates, and um, we'll look forward to the next step. Great, next iteration. Thanks. thanks for your time and comments. Thank you. Thanks. Next item is staff report. Uh, let's see, just a couple of, actually really just one quick update uh, for the board and anyone who's uh, paying attention out there on the TV. Uh, so Plan of Palooza, our comprehensive plan, public engagement, week-long process occurred, I guess it was two weeks ago now, um, very successful event, <coughs> very appreciative of all the residents who turned out. Um, having worked here in town for 10 years, I was also very excited to say I, I met a lot of new people. Um, so I think there's a lot of new faces that are getting involved um, and, and engaging in, in the process. So um, that was excellent. Um, the 
opening presentation and closing presentation are both available on the scarboroughengage.org website, so folks can watch those if they weren't able to attend. Um, and uh, so I would say stay tuned for sort of our next steps in the comp planning process. At this point, you know, our consultants are still compiling everything they heard two weeks ago, compiling data and putting together a draft plan. Um, so it's going to be some months till we see anything sort of from them. Um, but, we're, you know, uh, staff, the Long Range Planning Committee, uh, Karen Martin from SEDCO, we're still sort of thinking about ways to keep folks engaged and thinking about the comprehensive plan so we don't sort of have all this energy and then need to sort of reignite the fire. Hopefully we can keep the embers going and um, when it comes back we'll have the same level of excitement. So that is what I have for staff report this evening. Uh, Angela, did you have anything you want to touch on tonight? Don't yep. want to? I'm no? good. Okay. Uh, is there an administrative amendment report? Do not have anything to report on this evening. Any planning board correspondence? Planning board comments? I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding Panapalooza. Um, when we were at the last uh, event, when we were walking out, you said, I believe you said, you can go on the website and make additional comments. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I think that's important to get out there to the public. Thank you. Now, the thing is, because I've done that, and it's... Um, it's a little bit of a challenge to find out where you can make that comment if you just want to make a general comment. And I think it's, I forget, I think it's under, it, I forget what, which one of the drop downs it is. But or sort of general comments, rather general. less than sort of the question. Right, okay. yes, yeah. Yep. And because um, people might, they may want to add something, but Perfect. they can't figure out where do I just add it because I don't want to add it to those particular questions. So you might want to make that a little easier if that's possible. Okay. So ScarboroughEngage.org is still live? It is still oh, live. Yeah. ScarboroughEngage.org is still live. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yes. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay. Um, I'll just add on Planet Palooza, I was able to attend that that uh, that closing summary, which which was very interesting. I there were there were parts of that presentation um, that that touched on town demographics and trends and things, and there are a couple things in there that, that, I, that were new to me, things that I learned. Uh, and so I thought that was very helpful. And then, of course, just the sort of more um, visioning part of it as well was interesting. And i gotten pretty good anecdotal feedback from a couple of different people around town who, who were able to, to drop in, even during kind of the op open studio time that they had. Um, so I think there were a lot of different venues for people to participate. So. Um, like Jay, I'll look forward to seeing what, what comes of that a few months down the road. There's just one more thing, too, that came out of that last presentation. I was surprised to see them indicate that the town's population was over 20,000 people now. Mm. That, that's pretty astonishing. <laughs> right. There are some interesting yeah. things about commuting patterns and mm. sort of the pass-through traffic that Scarborough sees, which is a big part of the we face on Route 1. And so, yeah, I agree. It, it was a... It was, a, it was a good process, and we'll see what comes out of it, and more still to come. Any other planning board comments? All right. With that, I will move to adjourn. Do we have to say anything? Second. Any discussion?